Microsoft Recall, a new AI tool by Microsoft, is one of the biggest mistakes in terms of privacy that I've ever heard of in the history of computing. If you don't know what Recall is, in this video we'll break down what Recall is, why I think it's such a security issue, and we'll talk about the troves of people that are actually leaving the Windows community to use Linux as desktop just to avoid this feature. Now, if you're new here, hi, my name is Ed. This is Low Level Learning, a channel where I make videos about software and cybersecurity. So if you like that stuff or just wanna hang out, hit that sub button, I really appreciate it. So what is Microsoft Recall? Well, the idea behind Microsoft Recall at face value is actually pretty cool when it comes to the modern user, right? The regular user who just wants to use their computer more efficiently and more effectively. So let's say for example, and I'm gonna repeat basically the example that Microsoft gave. Let's say for example, you knew that sometime in the past you were looking at brown leather bags, but you couldn't really remember exactly what program you're using or what website you're using to look at that piece of information. What Recall does does, is recall is taking a screenshot of your computer every five seconds and it's taking that screenshot and within your computer so locally it's running an instance of Azure AI which is Microsoft's proprietary AI model and it's using the internal NPU or the neural processing unit which is different than your CPU it's using the NPU in your computer to do OCR of data and text in that image to add metadata to that image and be able to search through it to look for that brown leather bag so you can go through and you can just search in the Microsoft recall prompt, hey, I'm looking for a time that I was looking at brown leather bags, or if you knew generally the time you're looking at it, you can, you can go through and look at all the screenshots of your computer. Now again, from a basic user perspective, it sounds pretty cool. I mean, it'd be pretty sweet if, you know, I remember I was watching a video about, you know, a cool car, can't remember exactly what the video was, and I could just type in Ferrari, and like, there you go, you get the video. But again, I think some people, probably my audience that's watching this video right now, will go back to what I just said, where, Microsoft is taking a screenshot of your computer every five seconds and immediately have issues with that. Now, the first concern was that, what is Microsoft doing with these pictures? A Microsoft executive promised that the screenshots and metadata were all being hosted and processed locally. And that is true. There is right now no evidence for computers that have recall enabled that any of that telemetry is going out to Microsoft. All the processing is done, again, locally on your NPU. So the data exists on your computer and then your NPU is doing the processing. So then the question you're probably asking is why is this such a security vulnerability? Well, there are two, I think, primary issues that I have with this. The first being, yes, the data is stored locally. It is good that Microsoft is not collecting it up to the cloud. You don't want Microsoft to have access to that data. Even if it's encrypted, you get into this question of who has the keys, where does all that key information live. But from a personal privacy standpoint, if I had a folder on my desktop and it said tax information, right? I would be very nervous that if I ever got hacked, that that folder would be targeted as a piece of information that a hacker could take and use to hold me ransom, use to steal my identity or anything like that. Consider the case that now instead of having a folder called tax information, I literally have an infinitely long tape reel of everything I've done on my computer ever as well as metadata that can be searched through that is just like text that you can search to see what kind of things I'm doing on my computer. So for example, if someone wanted to know if I were interested in Magic the Gathering to target me in a social engineering campaign, they could literally just search in that data Magic the Gathering and see that I'm that kind of person. Also, maybe an authoritarian government, if they were to collect this data off of me and then they were able to search if I were looking at something that was deemed you know, not suitable by that government, they could use that in this panopticon to kind of tag me as a, as a dissenter, right? There's a lot of really, really dangerous things that happen when you have this kind of information stored about you literally anywhere. And again, the idea is that it's stored locally, but if you make one mistake and get hacked one time, your entire person personality, your entire lifestyle and browsing history are leaked to the person that, that hacked you. Much like I wouldn't store my social security number in plain text on my desktop in please don't read this.txt, I don't want to leave a trace of all the things I've ever done on my computer for somebody to possibly take in the future. Now you're probably thinking, maybe there are ways we can securely store this data in a way that if a hacker were to get into the computer, they couldn't access it. Well, a recent Wired article actually showed that the ways that Microsoft promised the data was stored were actually not 
entirely true. The first thing they said was that the screenshots that Recall takes are going to be encrypted at rest, meaning that you can't go and view the screenshot after it's taken. It lives in a way that you are not able to access it. If the program that runs Recall is able to access the data, there is a way for the computer to decrypt it and open it, which means that somebody running at the same privilege level as Recall, meaning you're able to elevate to system level, is able to open that data. Now, how do we elevate the system level, right? Do we need to be an administrator to open Open the recall data. The thought was that you have to be admin on the computer. So of course, if you get hacked, maybe they're not admin level when they hack into you. So the recall access isn't possible and it doesn't really matter. A researcher at Project Zero actually just figured out by doing basic Windows token impersonation, which if you don't know what that is, in Windows, every process runs at a certain level and that level is captured in a token. There's a way that you can use the Windows API to take the token from one process running at a higher level and inject that into a different process and now that process runs as the higher privilege of the other process, they were able to do token injection to access the recall database that lived on their computer and search through that database and find text about the things that they were doing in previous days without running as administrator. So basically what the recall database turned into is a text file that had all of the OCR data from their previous browsing history. Why is this such a big deal to me? Why, why do I care so much about this? Again, I'm in the security community, but the majority of the world, basically everyone else but me, minus like a thousand people or whatever, are not in the security community. So why do I feel so deeply about this? I think features like this put the average user who are unaware or just ignorant to these problems at a security disadvantage. Like for example, my grandmother, right? Maybe she doesn't really care about the security of her computer. Maybe she wants to just go play Farmville or Mojang Tiles or whatever, right? So when data like this is collected about her and her browsing habits, as she goes through her day and being a person who is not very technically literate, eventually goes and gets hacked, Microsoft has basically built in a pattern of life collector that tells the story of my grandmother's last couple of days without her even knowing or consenting to. Obviously, you probably think that you can disable recall, and actually right now, if you're on a computer that has recall installed, you can go and disable it. But you may find out that in a couple weeks after Microsoft ships a new update, or maybe in a few months when like Windows 11 Service Pack 2 or whatever comes out, um, that recall is magically turned back on. It would not be the first time that Microsoft had a feature in a product that people didn't like, that got disabled by the user, and then got accidentally turned back on when an update came out. To me, this whole recall situation just feels like more corpo bullshit where AI is the new hotness right now. I personally believe we're in a bit of an AI bubble. I acknowledge that chat GPT 3.5 and forward are pretty cool, um, but I think we are beginning to see the end of like what AI is capable of doing without some kind of major technological advancement in uh, NPU computing or in like actual compute. But that being said, I just don't think that there's anybody that actually wants recall, and I don't think it's a good idea from a security standpoint. I think it puts more people at risk than it actually helps, and I don't think it's for the good of people that are using their computers. And to be fair, I am not the only one that feels this way. I'm not some kind of like AI doomer or, you know, Microsoft recall doomer alone in my basement, although I am in my basement right now. Um, <laughs> there are entire troves of people that are saying that 2025 is going to be the year of the Linux desktop, meaning that they are going to move their daily drivers from being a Windows platform over to being a Linux platform, just to get away from the idea that Microsoft is going to have recall on their computers eventually, probably, whether they like it or not. So that's it for now. It's kind of wanted to give my opinion on this. I kind of held back about talking about this. I tweeted about it. Um, I didn't think it really warranted a whole video, but when I saw that not only did Recall come out and then I was sketched out about that, I saw the Wired article that I'll link in the description below uh, that showed that the implementation of Recall was not correct. To me, it's just a disaster waiting to happen. Um, so I really hope they either roll it back or make it opt in, not opt out. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the sub button, and then go watch this video about the PS4 jailbreak, which is actually pretty neat. See you there.